LUTs are a great way to add pre-made filters to our images. Today we'll look at how to import LUTs that other people have created and also how to make our own. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent and today we're talking about using LUTs in the Affinity programs. First we should understand what is a LUT. LUT stands for Look Up Table. And really it's just a file that has a predefined set of color adjustments. You can almost think of them as filters that we use on Instagram or some other social media platform. So here I have an example of some of them in action. On the top left, I have the original image here, and I've applied three different LUTs to it. You can see the dramatic color differences we get with each of them. Now LUTs are not an affinity specific concept. They're used in many photo editing programs, and they even support it in lots of video programs too, like DaVinci Resolve, Premiere, and Final Cut. It's a very common way to add a consistent color grade to your photos or videos. So first let's talk about how we can actually get LUTs that other people have created. They're a very common asset to find on graphic design websites. Here I am on Creative Fabrica and I search for LUTs. If I scroll through, you can see lots of different examples here. We have some of these gritty ones over here. These are some bright lifestyle ones. You can also refine your search to find LUTs that are more related to your niche. So for example, I can type tropical LUTs here. And I'll scroll down. And you can see there's lots of ones that are designed for tropical photography. I could type urban LUTs. And then we get ones for colors that more match cityscapes. Now the file type we want to load for Affinity is called a .cube file. I found this LUT pack I like, and it says Photoshop, but despite the name, if I scroll down, I can see they include these cube files, so I can actually download it and use it. So I'll do that right now. I'll download it, and then we'll check it out on my file system. So I've downloaded the file here. It's this .zip. Let me extract it. So I've unzipped it and I'll look inside. And what's inside is really gonna vary depending on who made the package you downloaded. Sometimes there'll be these PDFs that explain how to use things. But for Affinity, what you wanna do is find the files that have the .cube files in it. So I think it's this one, LUT filters. So if I click in there, if I drag this to the right, I can see all these .cube files and each of these is going to be a LUT. So I'm back in Affinity Photo here and we import LUTs through an adjustment layer. So with my layer selected here, I'm gonna click the adjustment button down here. I'm gonna select LUT, and this will work in all the Affinity programs, Photo, Designer, and Publisher. So I'll click this button here. And now I have two options, Load and Infer. I'll talk about Infer later. Right now we just wanna do Load. So I'll click Load LUT, and I'll navigate to the LUTs folder that I downloaded. And now I can choose one of these cube files. So I'll choose Dreamy Tranquility. Let's click that, I'll click Open. And now it applied that LUT to my image. So I'll close this box. And if I expand my layer stack here, you can see the LUT is just an adjustment. So I can toggle on and off. So this is off, on, off, on. You can also change the opacity if it's too strong. So I can click opacity here. I can dial it down a little bit. I'll max it back out again. Like all adjustment layers, you can also add a mask to it. So I can click the mask here. I'll drag the mask to the LUT. And maybe I don't want it to affect the person here. Maybe I just want it to affect the background. So I'll click a brush. I'll select some type of soft brush. Maybe I just want it to subtly affect the girl. So I'll select some gray here and I can take the effect off of her if it's too strong. So I go back to my layers and I can toggle the mask on and off. So before, after, before, after. But I'll delete this and I'll just have the LUT affect the whole image. Now, even when you have this adjustment applied, you can still add other adjustments if you like. I can add curves. So let me click the adjustments. I'll add curves. I can just make a quick little S curve. Maybe get some more contrast in there. Maybe brighten it up a bit. I could add some vibrance, so I'll click the adjustments again. I'll select vibrance, could dial it up. I can keep making these changes on top of the LUT itself. And if I ever wanna change the LUT, I can click on it and I can load a different one. So I'll click load LUT. Let's choose some random one down here, neon magic. So I'll click open and we get a different look. Now it can be tedious to test LUTs one by one there just by loading them and seeing what they look like. Affinity Photo actually gives us a way to load them in bulk. Now this isn't in Affinity Designer and Publisher. This is only a feature of Affinity Photo. And we can do this through the Adjustments tab. This is the reason we can't do it in the other programs. This Adjustments tab only exists in Affinity Photo. If you don't see it here, you can enable it through Window Adjustment. But then I can scroll down here and I can expand LUT. And it comes with some predefined LUTs here, as you can see. But I'll close this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the gear icon and I'm just gonna create my own category of LUTs. So I'll create a new category. And these LUTs are related to streaming, so I'll call it streaming LUTs. I'll click OK. And you can see there's nothing in there yet. What I can do now is click the gear icon again, and I can say import. Now I could import all of these if I want, but I'll just choose about six or so. I'll just randomly choose some. 
But if you like on your computer, you can import as many as you want. And I'll click open. Now if I scroll down, these are the LUTs that I imported. And if I click each one, I can quickly see the effect. And the one I choose will be applied to my image. Now let's look at how we could create our own LUT. And once again, this is a feature that only works in Affinity Photo. We can load LUTs in Designer and Publisher, but this creation process is only supported here in Photo. Now when we create a LUT, what we're really doing is just exporting the adjustment layers that we apply to our image. And the LUT is only going to be adjustment layers and nothing else. So let me add an adjustment here. I'll click Adjustments. And I'll click Gradient Map. And this is a pretty common way to adjust the coloring in our image. I won't go into too much detail on gradient maps here, but I have a whole video on that subject that I'll link to below. I also did a gradient map live stream recently that you can also look at for more information. Now a very brief summary of gradient maps is that these colors are going to be applied to our darks, our midtones, and our highlights. Now these default colors aren't really that interesting. Let me change them to something a little cooler. Maybe I'll make this one a darkish red. I'll make the midtone an orange. I'll make the top part kind of a subtle orange also. Let's make this a little redder. Now gradient maps get their real power when we change the blend mode. So I'll click blend mode here and I'll select soft light and I'll close it. And now we can see the effect that that is having on our image. So let me turn it off. So this is before, after, before, after. So it really changed the feeling of our image. I could add more adjustments to this image if I want to export with my LUTs. For example, I could add curves. I could do like an S curve. I could also add levels, kind of bring out the blacks and whites. But in my experience, it's best to not put curves and levels in a LUT, so I'll just leave these out. The most valuable information, I think, is just the gradient map. And then when people use our LUT, they can choose how to do the curves and levels themselves. So to export a LUT is very simple. You just go to File, Export LUT, and you get a little preview here with this cat image. You can adjust the quality if you want. I'll put it up to like 64, kind of in the middle. I'll call it my test LUT. And I'll click export. Let's call it test LUT. And now it's exported. Now the question of course is how do we use that LUT? Well, it's very easy. I have this image open here and we just add the LUT like we did before. I'll click the adjustments. I'll click LUT. Then I'll select load LUT. I'll select my test one here, open. And the effect is applied here. If the effect is too strong, I can reduce the opacity. But I kind of like it at 100% there. Before, after, before, after. And even though the LUT is applied, I can now go and apply my other adjustments if I want. So maybe this is an example where I want to adjust the curves, make it contrast a little bit more, maybe add a little more vibrance. You can change the whole feeling of your image. Now I should give a word of warning here. Sometimes when I've exported LUTs through Affinity Photo and then imported them into another image, the LUT doesn't seem to work. It just has no effect that I can tell. I don't know exactly what causes this, and I've seen some other people on the Affinity forums mention the same problem. But usually if I save my files and just restart Affinity, it seems to work eventually. So try giving that a shot if it's not working for you. In addition to loading a LUT, we can also infer a LUT. But this means that we'll give Affinity two photos, an original photo and a filtered photo, and it'll try to figure out what the LUT is by taking the difference between the two photos. And then we can apply it to another image. So let's say I have these two images, an original image and an image with the filter applied to it. Well, I can ask Affinity to try to guess the LUT between these two images and apply it to this image. So I'll select this image and I'll click Adjustments. I'll click LUT. And now we use the Infer LUT button that I talked about earlier. So I'll click Infer LUT. It's going to ask me to select two files. The first file I want to select is the original image here. So I have that on my file system. So I'll click Original. I'll click Open. Now it's going to ask me to open another file. And this is going to be the second file it wants to see. So I'm going to click the filtered file. That's this here. I'll click Open. And we can see as it figured out the color transition between these two images and it applied it to this image here. Now let me click delete here. The order you choose those two files does matter. Let me do it backwards and show you what it looks like that way. So I'll click adjustments, LUT. I'll click infer LUT. I'll select the filtered one first. I'll click open. Then I'll click the original and I'll click open. And you can see it made my image cooler because it's transitioning from the filtered image to the original image. And that might be what you want. But just be aware that the order that you enter them in actually matters. I used gradient maps a few times in this tutorial, so be sure to check out my video on that subject if you're not clear how they work. You can also check out my recent live stream on the topic where I answered viewer questions about gradient maps. And of course, if you have any questions about LUTs, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.